folks, uh, welcome to my second YouTube stream inspired by Russell Brand's The Trues. Uh, I'm curious, I'd love to come up with a name for this, uh, so if you have any ideas for names, let me know. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, money, uh, inspired by a really extraordinary new article in Foreign Affairs uh, in the September-October 2014 issue called Print Less But Transfer More by Mark Blythe and Eric Lonergan. Uh, essentially, what this uh, what this article uh, kind of suggests is that the central bank um, should essentially print money and give it out to consumers, to people uh, across the economic spectrum, uh, as a way to address the sort of global stagnation in the economy. Uh, they write. Rather than trying to spur private sector spending through asset purchases or interest rate changes, central banks, such as the Fed, should hand consumers cash directly. In practice, this policy could take the form of giving central banks the ability to hand their country's taxpaying households a certain amount of money. The government could distribute cash equally to all households, or even better, aim for the bottom 80% of households in terms of income. Targeting those who earn the least would have two primary benefits. For one thing, lower income households are more prone to consumes, so they would provide a greater boost to spending. For another, the policy would offset rising income inequality. Such an approach would represent the first significant innovation in monetary policy since the inception of central banking, yet it would not be a radical departure from the status quo. Most citizens already trust their central banks to manipulate interest rates, and rate changes are just as redistributive as cash transfers. When interest rates go down, for example, those borrowing at adjustable rates end up benefiting, whereas those who save and thus depend more on interest income lose out. So, I mean, foreign affairs, you know, is generally considered one of the organs of the, you know, kind of establishment, uh, relatively conservative. Uh, I think it's quite extraordinary that at this point in time, they're proposing such a radical solution. And, I mean, it doesn't seem one that's likely to be uh, adapted. Uh, in my work over the last years, I've done a lot of uh, thinking around um, kind of the money system. Uh, I edited an extraordinary book, uh, Sacred Economics by Charles Eisenstein, which is uh, free online. Uh, we also, uh, through Evolver Editions, put out an anthology, What Comes After Money, which was looking at uh, alternatives to the present monetary system. Uh, recently, I've been inspired by John Boyk, uh, his work with... Um, uh, the uh, Local Economic uh, Direct Democracy uh, Association model. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Bernard Leotar, who wrote a book called The Future of Money, and uh, Tom Greco's book, uh, The End of Money and the Future of Civilization. Uh, I think that we have to recognize that uh, the current monetary system is a major problem. And this is a very interesting uh, kind of proposal by from foreign affairs to address it in such a direct way. Uh, but, um, you know, really the problem is that we have to bring our accounting back in alignment with the Earth's ecosystems. And I don't think anybody really knows how to do this at this point. I think it would actually require some type of uh, global conference that, 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 you know, would have to begin with the realization that um, the monetary system is, is a design artifact, you know, and, and requires a redesign. Uh, that's what really fascinated me about, uh, for, our, for instance, Bernard Leotard's uh, work in The Future of Money. He analyzed the whole history of uh, currencies and noted that our, that, that our currency was designed because it was um, you know, debt-based and interest accruing. It's a currency that has only a kind of masculine competitive values inscribed in it. He described it as a yang currency. But he noted that throughout history, you also found uh, yin currencies, community currencies that you find in places like Bali and so on. In my uh, documentary, 2012 Time for Change, we talked about um, a Japanese currency called the Furio Kipo, a caring relationship ticket, which is particularly used that you do, you take care of an old person in your neighborhood and you get a, you get a credit for that. And then maybe one of your family members or children gets taken care of. And that's been a, a very powerful tool in Japan. Uh, so yeah, so we, you know, and essentially we need to see a bunch of innovations in terms of uh, currencies, local currencies, um, and even global currencies. I mean, one of Bernard Leotard's idea is to have a currency called uh, the Terra, which would be a global uh, trading currency with a negative interest charge, what he calls a demurrage charge. And the advantage of that is that you would have no uh, interest in hoarding such a currency. If you happen to have a surplus of it, you would want to share it as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, Tom Greco in The End of Money and the Future of Civilization suggests that businesses, manufacturers, service providers 
in various localities could come together and create their own form of a credit uh, through what he talks about as uh, local uh, economic exchange trading uh, systems, uh, local something like that, uh, let's. Uh, and um, yeah, and they could interest zero interest loans to local businesses. Um, John Boyk and the participatory democracy kind of uh, project he's doing is looking at uh, community currencies where you create community associations who issue their own currencies and that these, um, these local currencies have more and more positive impacts over time and they tend to level out income over 10 or 20 years. He's, he's, they've been doing a sophisticated modeling around this would lead to a situation where every household had roughly 100,000 uh, income in 20 or 30 years. So there are a lot of interesting uh, proposals out there. Uh, you know, the question is, what would it take to actually make them scale up? And um, obviously another, you know, major kind of development has been Bitcoin. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, Mark Andreessen, who's a relatively conservative uh, investor, you know, uh, internet pioneer, uh, noted that um, Bitcoin could potentially be as important a kind of um, development ultimately as the internet itself, in that Bitcoin allows for a secure, uh, transparent peer-to-peer -peer exchanges um, that don't require mediation of uh, central banks. And now on top of Bitcoin, there are a number of companies that are, there are, there are seeking organizations that are seeking to innovate and develop ways that you can use the blockchain architecture of Bitcoin to build new forms of cooperatives, um, new forms of companies uh, that would be uh, distributed and autonomous. So in a way you could look at Bitcoin itself as the first a fully distributed and autonomous corporation. There's no hierarchy. There's no CEO. Everybody who has a Bitcoin, uh, you know, owns a share in, in in Bitcoin itself as a distributed autonomous uh, organization. So anyway, that's that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. That um, you know we, we can see that uh, you know as this foreign affairs uh, article lays bare, and as Thomas Piketty's recent book has discussed, economic inequality has gone haywire, and it's leading to all sorts of negative uh, social impacts. Now the problem is that you know giving out money is an interesting idea, but we don't really want to encourage. Uh, scaling up of consumption and production of more consumer goods. Uh, change in the monetary system, you know, considering the ecological crisis and the resource depletion crisis and species extinction and so on, a change in the monetary system has to be somehow devised or designed so that it leads more to kind of a, a sharing cooperative uh, infrastructure where uh, communities are working together to actually uh, produce more locally, reduce the burden on the environment, protect uh, wilderness corridors, protect watersheds, and so on. Uh, so hopefully we'll see uh, a model uh, like this emerge uh, in the next few years. Thank you so much for uh, listening to me today on my second YouTube uh, broadcast, inspired by uh, Russell's The Trues. Uh, I look forward to talking to you soon.